Hello and welcome to our symbol community meeting for the month of May. Uh, I'd like to just welcome everyone that's here. Today's date is Wednesday, May 24th, 2023. Uh, if you're watching this recording from home, we encourage you to come in and join us live. As a reminder, these community meetings are public and recorded and posted to YouTube at the conclusion of this meeting. Uh, we have two monthly meetings which occur on the fourth week of every month. This meeting is the America's Friendly time slot on Wednesday, the fourth Wednesday at 11 Pacific. And we also have the APAC Friendly meeting on Thursdays at 8 a.m. India Standard Time. Uh, just as a reminder, this meeting is for you, the community. So if you are encouraged to bring up any discussion topics, ideas, questions, or anything else you need help with related to like conversation, analytics, and, and symbol. If you aren't able to attend either of these times, you can always reach out on the Google group or in Slack. And if you have any discussion topics that you want to bring up today, uh, you can scroll down to the bottom here and add them to the to the bottom here. Having said that, yeah, let's go over announcements. So the uh, recording and the slides for the April community meeting has been posted. So you can find the recording on YouTube and see if I can get the recording on YouTube and the slides are, you know, available as Google Slides so you can access the links and stuff off the material there. Just as a reminder, we have, I did some reorganization on the community repo. So did some like reorganization there and posted more links and articles and also some of the training videos. And then there's the upcoming training videos, which is going to cover uh, there's going to be three of them. There's going to be one for topics, one for questions, follow-ups, and action items, and one for entities. I've completed all the slides, and I just need to kind of like walk through the like you know the verbiage and like what I'm going to say, and then I need to need to do the recording on that. So stay tuned for that. That should be hopefully uh, be available at the end of this month. So for updates and curated content. We had no action items from the last meeting. And since we don't have anything in the topic section or for discussion, I have a, the topic today for this month is going to be uh, enterprise conversation architectures and applications. And I have some slides. So just going to jump right into that. So yeah, we're today we're going to talk about enterprise conversation architectures. We're going to talk about definitions, like what is an app enterprise application we're going to talk about use cases and a whole bunch more of other things. Um, so you can see the agenda here. So like I said, what are, what's enterprise software? We're going to talk about uh, specific use cases for enterprise software and like specifically as they relate to conversation based applications. We're going to have some examples of like, you know, what your typical enterprise conversation application looks like. And I have a, a couple demos for everyone here, and then Q&A. So what is enterprise software? So if you look at enterprise software and you look at the, the definition and you just do like a Wikipedia, um, you find that the definition is software that satisfies an organization's needs. So typically most applications, a lot of them are geared towards like what can an individual person or a small group of people, what can they do, like a small team? Like, what can this application do for them? But in enterprise software, you're talking about elevating or prioritizing the need of the collective organization. So, like, these are very large organizations, you know, with, you know, potentially hundreds of thousands of people in them, right? In those applications, you know, they typically have much higher level, you know, functionality. So, they tend to dabble in, like, management operations, like automation and reporting, for the organization as a whole, as it pertains to like whatever their business is. You know, most enterprise software obviously needs to process information quickly since we're talking about large, large systems with large amount of users. It needs to be able to process its work uh, efficiently and quickly so that people aren't hung up and waiting for results and, and data. And typically you find that because these applications are large, are deployed across networks. Enterprise software typically in interoperates with other enterprise software. You could think about like databases, firewalls, mesh networks, and applications typically have some sort of SLA or service level agreement like 
what is the downtime in, for this application? Like um, when I'm doing operations, like maintenance operations, you know, does that affect downtime? Usually not. And there's usually ways of making the application still available. And then typically, lastly, you find that applications are like customizable, right? There's you have what, some way of extending applications uh, such that, you know, you can tailor them to like whatever your business needs are. So that's like kind of an older definition. And if we kind of like modernize that definition, if you take it like according to Gartner and like what they say, like what enterprise an application does. So an enterprise application is very integrated towards like the core businesses, kind of like already alluded to that a little bit. So you're like, you know, maintenance operations, like what's on the production line, your logistics of if you're doing like shipping and you're doing like inventory, that kind of stuff. So it's integrated all aspects of the business operations. And because we live in a like an internet connected world where the other side of the globe is still awake while we're sleeping, we're talking about high availability and making sure that the application, your five nines are six minutes of downtime per year. Your business is constantly running 24 seven. And just like the previous definition, you know, there's always speed and concurrency because of the amount of users that are on your system. A lot of that's achieved through scalability. So, so in the, like today's terms, you're talking about like microservices, right? So, like if you have microservices that are geared towards specific functions, and you find that a particular area of your business is hitting super peak demand because of the time of day, you can always scale out these microservices to meet that demand, right? So that's kind of like what the idea behind that is. And then obviously these like microservices with the advent of container technology, you know, they're robust, right? They're like, if there is a problem that the idea is that you have the system be able to like correct itself with very little uh, human intervention, containers and stuff like that help out a lot when, when something goes wrong. Other aspects of enterprise applications are regulatory compliance because we're talking about worldwide stuff need to comply with laws and, and regulations in other countries and, and within your home country. So HIPAA as an example in the United States, right? If you deal in healthcare, anything healthcare related, you need to like make sure that you're compliant with HIPAA. And then you also have like data retention policies. Like what does, there's a disaster, like what does a backup and recovery operation look like? Data retention in the other sense where it's like, how long am I holding onto this data? Do I have a, a storage system or storage software system that I can age off data that's no longer uh, needed and being used? Just like before, extensible extensibility so you can like extend the, the application and the functionality to meet your own. Finally, it's like you're talking about like a lot of automation, most enterprise applications these days are like API driven, like reporting is done through dashboards and, and stuff like that. So then if we take that now in the lens of conversation analytics and understanding like conversation insights and stuff like that, what does an enterprise application look like? So that you're in enterprise application, you're talking about much different things, right? Um, because we're talking about spoken word and sentences, you're talking about like understanding what the conversation and what the individual sentences and the words and the meanings are. So you're really talking about like how to data label and like create metadata around like what is being said in a conversation, recognizing that a sentence is actually a question, like who is the subject of that sentence? Are there any topics that uh, of our particular interest to our business, that kind of stuff. And then you know, still have the storage and, and data retention requirements, right? Because it probably even becomes more so important because they're talking about uh, conversations that could be done with some sort of certain confidence. So you might need to have the ability to redact information that's sensitive. Um, obviously still doing the compliance and stuff like that how long you can hold on to data and what you need to age off and what you need to get rid of. I think a second aspect of enterprise conversation applications where you start to get into like the, like the Googles, the Facebooks, any kind of like social networking or social media kind of uh, site where it's, you're taking the data that you're capturing in app in conversations and you're like realizing patterns and associations between like seemingly unrelated things, but they actually are related. And it's, analyzing those patterns and associations and being able to do actions, right? And make predictive actions and outcomes so, such that it's better for your business. And a lot of that done is done by taking large, large amounts of conversation data and turning on them using like machine learning and reinforcement learning. Just like before, there needs to be some level of extensibility and customization. 
so that you can tailor it towards your specific needs. Like I've already mentioned compliance and uh, so we'll skip over that. The idea that it's enterprise, your application is enterprise ready, which is like, you know, never offline. If there is an impact, it's only integrated mode and your platform is still accessible. Kind of going that, the robustness and like the downtime and your five nines, it's like the predictability and operations when something goes wrong. Uh, how long an API call takes, what's the average, right? Because then you can have some sort of predictability and like how you need to scale things out or scale things back based on like demand. And then, you know, obviously, because we're talking about data, you need to have some sort of like uh, disaster recovery plan some, plan, some sort of like backup and recovery solution. So that's kind of like what I think embodies a, kind of as a great definition for uh, like an enterprise conversation application and and like what that means today. So now we're going to take a look at some use cases for enterprise conversation applications and like what that means. And there's really kind of like two big use cases, right? The first one is an enterprise conversation application needs to be able to process real-time conversations. So like this is understanding what conversations are being had in meetings like this, and then being able to surface those in those conversational insights to the people like the moderators of the hosts of those meetings, right? Like this is a business call. It would be like your sales associates. It goes from very small, simple things to, you know, very complex things. And like some of the smaller things are like small talk, right? It seems like trivial and it almost seems like inconsequential, but in, in reality, we know we're human, right? Like our kind of our point is to interact and to build a uh, rapport with someone. So like small talk, might actually be like recognizing that like I'm from Los Angeles, California. And, you know, if you saw that in my profile or like, like location information, as I joined the meeting, you could have your conversation system, your conversation application, like surface interesting facts about Los Angeles in order to make a connection with that person and say, Oh, Hey, you know, I, you know, I went to Los Angeles like two years ago, or if you don't have any personal connection, like I said, surface information, and ask about things like the Lakers and the playoffs, which is a sore subject right now, but uh, at the time of this recording. But yeah, all of that's kind of like building rapport, right? We're moving into more like relevant use cases to your business. You're on a sales call and individuals are talking about competitors and competitive features. You might key off those 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 topics, uh, like in, in the symbol case, like through the use of trackers, and you might be want to surface data or information like battle cards and like how you, how your company and your product stands up against other competitors' products and their features and stuff like that. And, or it could just be bringing awareness to the capabilities of certain features to your, on your own product, right? That may be not, not well understood or even like more obscure that doesn't get like a lot of uh, playtime in the print and stuff like that. And then like, finally getting to like the, you know, the real enterprise level, type use cases where it's like doing conversation aggregation, recognizing that there's information in a conversation that took place a week ago in Europe, and then being able to associate and make a relationship to the same topic that's being discussed today, or even tomorrow in a conversation in a meeting that's taking place in the United States and linking those two items together and understanding that there's a relationship and finding the context around that. So conversation aggregation, I think, is a very important subject as it relates to, to enterprises and social networks and stuff like that. And kind of like the, the big reason why we're talking about this meeting here today is this topic is being able to take real-time conversations and and asynchronous conversations and being able to leverage those two sources and treat those two sources of information, those two conduits or pipes of information as like one source of truth, right? Like one, even though one that set of data might occur in real time, that that information is treated just the same as it would be like an email, right? So the second use case, big use case is kind of already uh, hinted at is asynchronous conversations. So these are conversations that occur like in video, audio, and even like text. So like some examples of like asynchronous conversations are Zoom recordings, uh, anything like podcasts, webinars, uh, chat messages, like in Slack, and even like your email that you exchange, like email threads that you exchange with like business partners, kind of like I've already alluded to. And kind of the point of this, this discussion and the topic is to try to treat all of that 
media as equal, right? Um, so you have a single source of truth that you have all this stuff in one data lake or one data store or whatever that you can query these conversations, whether they're in a Zoom meeting or an email and be able to query that information with a single query. Having a single source of truth like lends to like automation and being able to process words and metadata and stuff like that to make those associations and those relationships in your conversations. So next, we're going to talk about the next iteration of an open source project at Symbol, where we uh, have something where we provide an off-the-shelf uh, implementation for a conversation, enterprise conversation application. So this is being able to take pre-built components and then being able to uh, extend the framework or extend the functionality to like fit your business needs. You can find the information for that uh, repo there. Um, actually, it's a couple of repos. The first repo is the actual core components themselves. So these are taking two components. So there's a component for processing real-time conversations. And kind of the point of this discussion is that there's now a new implementation for taking asynchronous conversations that are processed through Symbol and being able to take those conversations just like you would like a real-time conversation and persist the metadata and like the conversation into a database or data store and so that it can be looked up and you can query that information just like you would in a real-time real -time conversation. So you'll find the components in that enterprise conversation application repo and with all the documentation and how you set it up and provide some basics out of box functionality like doing transcription and doing like closed captioning and stuff like that. So you can see the words that are happening underneath the, the teleprompt there. And this used to be called the enterprise reference implement implementation repo, but it has since been renamed to kind of like show that now this is like a full fledged starting point and application that can do asynchronous and real time conversations. And the method in which you do extend the functionality for this framework is creating plugins. There's a, a whole framework about receiving messages and events through this framework and being able to react to those events because the asynchronous side of the house to process conversations is new. I created two plugins to, to handle asynchronous processing, asynchronous conversations. So like processing an email, for example, or like a zoom recording and being able to look for, uh, things within those conversations so that you can do, send an email to like get visibility or even call like a webhook to have two demos. The first demo will be real time and the second one will be asynchronous. So if we look at the architecture diagram, I know this is a lot to take in, but this is, this contains both components or both use cases. So like the top half of this diagram, I know this is kind of small, but the top half of the day gut diagram covers real-time uh, streaming communication. So this is like if you have a CPaaS platform or like you're in a Zoom meeting, this is doing the real-time insights through a WebSocket and getting real-time data back and then uh, storing it in that centered graph database, like all the conversational insights in the metadata. And the bottom half of this uh, diagram focuses on the new implementation for processing asynchronous conversations. So if we take a look at just the top half, um, this is kind of like just chopping that diagram in half so that we have a better picture. So on the left-hand side, you see your client side, which is, you know, could be a CPaaS platform. You're connecting through this yellow box, which is a WebSocket. I kind of already alluded to that we have this symbol real-time service that you connect into for your from your client. And this is the thing that processes all of the conversation insights to the symbol backend, to the symbol platform through a WebSocket. And when it receives those insights back, it, those insights are stored into the graph database in the center. And for every for every conversation insight, like a question, topic, or tracker, you'll fire off an event, which is a, a rabbit message bus event, which is this thing on the top, to every plugin that is in the system. So that this is these are the plugins that you would implement, or you can use the ones that are available off the shelf in the plugin repo. And this is how you extend the functionality where you don't need to write all of this code for this stuff. You only need to write little, little discrete pieces of code in the form of a plugin to create functionality for your 
real-time applications. So the those th the two plugins that I had mentioned that are currently implemented are there's a historical plugin uh, which effectively gives you the last five references mentioned for topics, trackers, or entities. So like say I said, there's an entity discovered like California. It, the historical plugin is going to go searching through the, the database to find the last five references in other conversations to California. And the statistical plugin is a plugin that kind of just lets you know how hot or how hot a topic is. So this is kind of like doing effectively kind of like a heat map of topics, trackers, and entities. So if I if you, like you hear like a lot of people saying like California, and maybe like this is an ISP situation, and you hear a lot of people saying there's an outage in like Los Angeles, like you'll you'll see the mentions in the, the first 30 minute bucket be really, really high, right? So this is like how you can use that information for your, you know, your real-time applications. So let's go ahead and stop right there. And I'm going to demo this, like what the setup looks like for real time, for real time applications. So let me see. So just like in the diagram previously, we're going to cover uh, the real time conversations and like what that would look like using this off the shelf implementation. I already have a Neo4j database running and I also also have a rabbit server running for the message bus. So just like in that diagram, we can see here run that, but I'm going to disable uh, transcription and the chat messages. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the historical plugin. So this is like this plugin right here. So it's going to connect to this proxy data miner service through a rabbit message bus and receive events from there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run a client. So this is the client component here. So we're simulating this using just a, a, a Go CLI and we'll receive events and just display them to the console instead of having like a fancy UI. And so once I start this, I'm going to go ahead and say a few things into the microphone on my laptop and we can see the conversation insights pop up. Hi, my name is David. I live in Long Beach, California. Have you ever visited Long Beach before? Have you ever visited California before? So you can see all the insights that are flowing through here. Um, so this is because the historical plugin, you don't really see much uh, in the in the client here because we're only talking about like the history. And this is the very first conversation we've recorded. Um, you know, you're not going to have any uh, messages from the historical plugin pop up, um, but uh, you can see in the Neo4j database, the browser here, you can see the conversations recorded and you can see, you know, various things here. Like you can see the, val this is Long Beach and this is California or David. And then uh, this one is California. So, and then you can see all the messages that were associated with it. And like, you know, like the insights um, in terms of like questions, like, have you ever visited California? So it's pretty cool. So this is storing all this conversation in the database. So now if I clear this and um, I run the same thing and I'm just going to like mention California again, and we should see some stuff popping up from the historical plugin, like letting us know previous mentions of anything that happened in prior conversations. So let's go ahead and do this here. I want to visit Long Beach, California. So I'm going to stop it right there. So I disabled the transcription this time. And so that's why we didn't see the flood of messages through here, but you can see them on the back end, right? Which is, uh, you know, have you ever visited California before, right? So it's building that up. But kind of like the more important piece of this portion of the demo is that we got a message from the historical plugin, right? Which you can actually see the debug statements here, the historical plugin console. But the historical plugin recognized that someone mentioned Long Beach, California, and it's going to send a message to the client to consume, which is back through the proxy data miner service and to the client. 
And this is kind of like the message that you get, the historical significance for Long Beach, California, which you see here. In this conversation, I said that I want to visit Long Beach, California. And in a previous conversation, right, the first conversation, I said that I lived in Long Beach, California. And so this plugin kind of gives you the history for um, like for any kind of entities, uh, topics, trackers, and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of like what the purpose of the historical plugin um, does. And so you could then surface something saying like, if this was more a more meaningful text um, and it was a more meaningful like entity or question or, or, or sentence or topic or tracker, you, you know, you could say that like, oh, Jane Doe mentioned that they wanted to go or that they live in Cal Long Beach, California. Maybe I can like talk to Jane about um, like where I should go visit in Long Beach, California. So now the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start this the, the statistical plugin and notice that the uh, data miner proxy service is still running for the real time conversations. And we also have the historical plugin still running. So I'm going to hit launch the statistical plugin right now. And those things are still up. And the cool thing about this is because it is a pluggable framework, you can just, you know, instantiate new plugins, or you could have plugins bounce and crash or whatever. And if it's a container based solution, it would start up and like it would begin processing things like nothing happened. So this time I'm going to uh, clear this out and I'm going to, you know, mention California again, and we're going to see like what happens in this case. I am going to take a flight to Long Beach, California tomorrow. So I'm going to stop it right there. So kind of really the interesting thing is now that we have two plugins running, right? We have the historical plugin and we have the uh, statistical plugin. You can see that these higher level application messages are sent um, to the client. So this time I said, I'm going to take a flight to Long Beach, California tomorrow. And you can see, you know, basically in this, this is what was currently said here. And what was previously mentioned in other conversations was that someone lived in Long Beach, California, and someone wanted to visit Long Beach, California. And this is like what the historical plugin, these messages for the historical plugin look like. And then also because we had the statistical plugin running, we can also now have a statistical message. So we actually have a, a trigger based on uh, the entity Long Beach, California. And this is the text that triggered this, this uh, statistical message. And you can see, right, we had two previous conversations. You know, obviously they're all twos because they're all within the last, you know, they all fall within those categories. But we had two previous conversations where someone had mentioned uh, Long Beach, California. And so this is kind of like what I wanted to demo for the real-time applications or the real-time uh, conversation application and, and the, the code that exists in the repo today. And this is like off the shelf software that you can use uh, and, you know, highly encourage that you use this because it provides history. It provides a place to store your data and um, it does it and handles real-time conversations and, and stuff like that. So it's, I think it's a pretty cool uh, way to process real-time conversations with off-the-shelf software. Okay, so for the second uh, demo, I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover the bottom half of you know this architecture diagram, which is uh, processing asynchronous components or asynchronous conversations using the the components that exist within the the uh, enterprise conversation repo there. So because this we're processing asynchronous conversations, the workflow is very different, right? So on the right hand or left hand side, you see uh, a, the client side application, which could be a human making a rest call or could be a process making a rest call. So this is basically, you're going to make a rest call with a, com a symbol conversation ID. So this is a conversation that has already been processed in the symbol platform. And you will basically want this system to be aware of that, that particular conversation. And you want to be able to persist that information into the database and also do certain activities, triggers, actions based on like what is being said in that conversation. So you'd make this REST API call with the conversation ID to this symbol asynchronous service. 
and you know it basically is going to call the symbol platform grab all of those insights for that asynchronous conversation so like a recorded zoom call and it's going to take all of those insights like entities topics trackers and it's going to persist them into the database and then for every one of the messages or the insights that are you know pulled from the symbol platform it's going to fire off a rabbit message uh, through the rabbit message bus to your asynchronous plugins it's up to the asynchronous plugins to do whatever it's going to do with these messages so these are plugins that you are going to build and so basically we provide the infrastructure again for all of this including the database you just need to implement these plugins. These plugins can be implemented in any language. They don't have to be Go um, because you're just interfacing through this Rabbit message bus. For the demo today, I'm going to demo all this. And we have two asynchronous plugins. It does send the email. And it, when, when it does make the HTTPS uh, call to your uh, endpoint, it's going to take the entire conversation. So the entire JSON of conversation, and it's going to send it to your e through email or in uh, this webhook uh, call. So I'm going to go ahead and demo that right now. The first thing we're going to do is if we look back at the architecture diagram here, we're going to start this symbol asynchronous service. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to start both the email plugin and the webhook plugin, um, which is right here. And we're going to start those two. So this is going to send an email based on like things that I'm going to trigger off of. And um, actually, the, we're going to trigger off the same stuff for the web, webhook plugins, but I'm going to show you what that configuration looks like. So in the webhook plugin, we're going to make, uh, we're going to stand up a, a, a webhook server right here. And this is what we're going to point to. So we're going to do that in a second. And these are the regular expressions that we want to key off of. So. Effectively, what I'm going to say is every question, every follow-up, every match, every topic, every tracker, every entity. So basically, as long as there's one conversation insight, I want you to make the webhook call. And it's basically just for demonstration purposes. You can make this like basketball, right? If someone mentions basketball in, as a topic, you then would get triggered for that. And you know these are all optional, but you need at least one in order to get like a trigger. But so we're going to go ahead and start that webhook plugin right now. And then, like I said, we need to call a REST endpoint in order for this plugin to, to make a, a call to a server. And so I'm going to stand up this webhook, very, very lightweight webhook endpoint, just so that we have something to call and see what it would look like on the receiving side. Um, so you can see that running right there. So now we have our date symbol data miner service, which is the center piece here. Then we have our two plugins, which is the email and the webhook plugin, right? We need to have a conversation ID. So this is a conversation that's already been processed in the symbol system. And so I'm just going to pick this default one, which is something that I've run already. And it's effectively just the the tech support call that's in the the API Explorer. So this is like one of the examples that you can use to like run conversation insights in the API Explorer. So I'm just going to curl this REST call to with so you can see this conversation ID. I'm going to curl that message to this data miner service. And this is the thing that's going to kick off the entire workflow, right? So this is this is me sending this REST call to this data miner service. So this is this portion right here, and then everything else will work its magic. And the last thing I should probably do is I should probably open my email. So you can see the email that we're going to get in the end there. So let's go ahead and kick all of this off and we can take a look at the outcome of this. So there's a lot of stuff that happened like pretty quickly. And effectively, I made this curl call with this conversation ID to the, the REST data miner service. Now, what it's going to do is the service is going to effectively take the conversation ID right here, and it's going to query for everything, right? It's going to query topics. It's going to query questions, follow-ups, entities, action items, and even grab the transcription, the messages in there. And it's going to query all of that stuff. And for everything that it discovers, so for every topic, for every question, it's going to send a rabbit message to these plugins. 
Oops, looks like there's a, oh, because I don't have any trackers set. So that's like an optional thing. So, um, and then like it's the close of the conversation. So I probably should make that uh, message a little friendlier, but I don't have any trackers set. So that's why you got that message. So it's going to take every one of those insights and sends it to the, the plugins that are the asynchronous plugins that exist. And in this case, that's uh, email. So you can see all of the same things that were uh, discovered in the data miner service. And so if we look at my inbox, we can already kind of see I have an email waiting. It should send an email um, notifying me that it triggered at least one of the uh, triggers or the regular expressions that matched. And in this case, I said, I want to know about everything that happens. So we, if we look at the email there, you can see this trigger email. These are the things that uh, had triggered to uh, basically triggered what caused this email to happen. These are the topics, these are the questions, follow-ups and entities and action items that occurred in this conversation, right? In this conversation ID. And here is the entire blob of JSON so that you could uh, do something with it. But effectively, this is kind of like your notification about someone mentioning like basketball, for example. So that's great. And in the webhook case, you see the same thing, right? These are all the things uh, that uh, were discovered. So these are the things that matched and it made this webhook API call to this webhook uh, server. And you can see that it did actually make the API call, right? So when I said that this thing, this webhook plugin sends uh, all of the JSON uh, to this webhook endpoint, it literally sends all of it. So if we take a look at the raw body of the message, you can see the action items, you can see the entity. It, so it's all contained within this JSON. So this is something that you would pass. So this endpoint would actually be a system in your infrastructure. So it'd be some at rest endpoint and you can effectively take the JSON here and manipulate it and do something with it that you know pertains to your to your business. So, so like say someone mentions the word basketball, this rest call then could like key off the word basketball and and do something like go find tickets for the Lakers or something. This is the demo and I hope you enjoyed it. This is the newest uh implementation of the newest uh, release asynchronous uh, infrastructure here that you saw in this demo is very it's new it's the latest thing and so there's many more plugins to come but these are the two that i thought of for demonstration purposes yeah i thought would be very cool so yeah um that was the demo for the asynchronous components i hope you enjoyed that like again so that is a demo of processing real-time conversation um, using the real-time infrastructure, the real-time components, these off-the-shelf components that you can use uh, contained within the repo, and also a demo of how to process asynchronous conversations. So those are all new components in this release that are available in that repo so that you can use. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed those that demo there. So the re some resources for you. Here's the symbol documentation. If you're not aware of it, the, the API playground, so you can understand more about like what conversation insights are available and like what uh, we can surface to uh, to a system or a user. And then, like I said, the, here's the links for the enterprise conversation application repo and the enterprise conversation plugins repo. So these contains all of the components that you saw in this demo in both of those demos today and. When you're building out your application, you'd create your own plugins. If you are creating like generic plugins, you know, I highly encourage you can like open a PR and submit them to this repo so that other people can use them. So yeah, just as a reminder, you know, if you have any questions about this demonstration or the slides or the topic, you know, you can always reach out to us on Slack or Twitter. And here's our GitHub. So you can find more projects and stuff like that. But yeah, just be involved and you can join the community and, you know, ask questions and stuff like that. And I'll hold for questions. And I don't think there are any. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And yeah, you know, look forward to seeing everyone at the next meeting um, where we'll have, I believe, a really cool topic for the month of June. Um, I can't announce it just yet because we want to make sure that it gets released, you know, the new feature. Uh, but it, you should hear announcements shortly. So, um, you know, just thank you for attending and I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation. Thanks. Thank you.